In today's video, I'm going to show you five tips you can use to make your iPad experience better. They're pretty basic. Actually, they're very basic, but hey, if you're new to the iPad, this video is made for you. You have to start somewhere, right? I think you'll find these tips very helpful. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Rich Bolin, and on this channel, we talk about tech, life, and how to get things done. If you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button and tap the bell so you'll be notified when a new video is released. It really helps the channel. And if you'd like to purchase the iPad I'm using, there's an affiliate link in the description below. So this is a continuation of my iPad for Seniors series. This series is designed to help seniors get better, faster at using their iPad. In this video, I'm using the base 2019 iPad and I made a short video on what a value buy this really is link down below. So let's dive in to five useful tips. Okay, so when you first turn your iPad on, this is typically what you see. You just see a, a screen of icons and your dock down here. But um, off to the side, and you may have discovered it just by sliding things around, uh, is the today view. If you slide from the left to the right, you bring the today view up. And these are widgets that give you more information. And um, you can slide them off and back on the screen. But if you want them to be permanently on the screen, all you have to do is slide down, click on the little edit button, go to the home screen, and tap uh, keep on home screen, and then you're done. And now they live there all the time, so they don't go away like that. Now, I happen to have the weather and photos and my battery and what's up next on my calendar, but you can put a lot of different things there. So it's worth taking a look at, at what's there. You might have some information that you're interested in seeing. To do that, again, you just go to the edit uh, screen and you scroll down until you see all the different things that are there. Maybe you want podcasts, so you click on the uh, plus button and maybe you want stocks though probably not now the podcasts are there and the stocks are there and you can just scroll through Oops. so now the stocks are there and the podcasts are there and if you want to um, actually go into one of these applications you just simply tap on it so if you want to see the weather it'll just load up and tell you what the weather is. And if you want to go back and take a look at photos, you can do it that way. There's my dog Cooper. But that is a very handy thing to have on your screen. And if you're new to the iPad, this is one of the things you need to know because you can sort of build in a few extra things there that uh, really help you use the iPad. So that is the today view. So when you pick up your iPad and you put your thumb on it, you use that to validate who you are in your iPad opens up. But have you ever done this? You pick up your iPad and you press on it and nothing. And then finally you get your uh, code that you have to enter to unlock it because you put the wrong finger on it. But you can use all of your fingers really if you want to. But you can add the fingers you would find most um, helpful to you as an extra fingerprint. To do that, you simply go into Settings, you go into Touch ID and Passcode, you enter the passcode for your device, and now you click on Add a Fingerprint. And you just place your finger on there, like that. And by the way, you're not pressing. You're just gently tapping. And then it'll tell you to adjust the grip. Hit continue. And now you just kind of put your finger on the home button in a slightly different way till it registers everything. And now it's complete. And now you've added another home button. So now when your iPad is off and you pick it up, you can take this finger your index finger and boom there you go and that's how you add an extra finger to touch ID 
so I made an entire video on, on how you can master the control center. And I thought I'd just show you a couple little things here. Uh, control center is hidden, it's out of sight, but if you swipe down from the top, you can bring the control center in. So again, all you do is kind of swipe down from the top. And you can change the screen brightness, you can change the volume, you can control music, you can screen mirror. There's just a whole bunch of different things that you can do here. But you can also edit all of these little widgets that are on here. Maybe you want something different. To do that, all you do is go to Settings, Control Center, Customize Controls, and here you can add whatever you want. Maybe you want to add a stopwatch and you want to take away the Apple TV remote. And you just click Remove. And now, when you swipe down, you have a stopwatch. And you can start it and you can stop it. And you can do that all from the control center. And there's so many handy tools and things that you can do in here. I'll link up the video down below on how to master the iPad control center. But don't forget, you can always change volume and screen brightness along with other things by simply swiping down from the top right. And that's control center. So another quick tip is just to uh, arrange your icons or maybe you want to rearrange them into some order that you like. To arrange the icons, meaning move them around on your screen, you just simply tap and hold, go to edit home screen and they enter jiggle mode and then from there you can just slide them wherever you want them to go. Maybe you want the calendar down at the bottom and you just slide the calendar down at the bottom. Um, you can also create folders this way. Maybe you don't want um, everything out like that. So you just take your icon and slide it on top of another and it creates a folder. And now you have a folder and you can put different icons and you can name this whatever you want. You can just simply type that out and we'll type in productivity again but you can name it whatever you want. So remember, you can move your icons anywhere you want on your home screen and you can create what are called icon folders. So one of the easiest ways to um, use FaceTime is to use contact. So you can, you can connect to FaceTime in two different ways. You can go to FaceTime and you can click on a name of someone you've spoken to recently there on the left hand side or you can go to contacts where you keep your contacts and all of that kind of stuff and you can just tap on FaceTime like this and it'll ring. So I'm calling my daughter Lindsay on FaceTime. Hey Lindsay. Hey. So you are now on worldwide television uh, and I'm explaining how to use FaceTime. Can you see me okay? Mm -hmm. And do you enjoy using FaceTime? I do. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much. I just wanted to show everybody how it works. Okay. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye-bye. And that's a good example of how you can use FaceTime. It really is that simple uh, to use. If you're brand new to the iPad, these tips may seem like a lot to take in. You might find it helpful to rewind and watch this video a few times until you get the hang of it. And while I know these tips are small, they do make a difference in how you enjoy your iPad. So. Take your time to learn a few new things. Plus, while we're all locked down during this pandemic, using FaceTime is a great way to stay connected with friends and family. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and share this video with anyone it might help. So what did you think about these tips? Please leave a comment below. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.